6 30 i'm calling this meeting to order as authorized by section 551.071 of the texas government code this meeting may be convened into closed executive session for the purposes of seeking confidential legal advice from the city attorney on any item on any item on the agenda at any time during the meeting. The City of Bastrop reserves the right to reconvene, recess, or realign the regular session or called executive session or order of business at any time prior to adjournment. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Schiff is under the weather and he has, we have gladly, he's elected to keep his germs at home, which we are completely fine with and we hope him that he has a speedy recovery, but that's why Mayor Pro Tem Schiff is not with us this evening. But we have two very lovely young ladies with us. If they will step forward, I'll tell you a little bit about them. We have Cara Lynn. She's in third grade, and she's in Troop 395, and she has been involved in Girl Scouts for four years. And I think when you're in third grade and you're involved for Girl Scouts for four years, it's mean, it means you're dedicated and probably that your mom is the leader. Um, Patricia Solorio has been, she's new to Scouts, she's in Troop 990, she's in fifth grade, and Patricia is going to be signing the pledge for us tonight. So Patricia's going to be facing you, and um, Carl's going to help lead the pledge. So if you would please rise, we will say our pledges. On my honor, I will try. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to a republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, to liberty and justice for all. Honor this flag to the United States God, and invisible. If you please remain standing, we have Pastor Dale Burke with Bastrop Christian Outreach Center. We, he's one of our chaplains and he has agreed to give our invocation tonight. Pastor Burke. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your blessings upon this meeting tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we live in a city with great pride and distinction and unity that was displayed here through the small business revolution. But thank you, Lord, tonight that there would be peace and order. Thank you for the law enforcement here represented tonight and each person that's presenting. Lord, I thank you that they would present with clarity and patience and confidence that their concerns would be heard tonight. And I thank you, Lord, for each council member, the mayor, and each council member here, that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they hear the cases before them and they, and they go over the agenda that's presented to them. We thank you, Father, for this great time here in this city that we are blessed, and we thank you now for your blessings upon it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Burke. Dale is also a man of the year. Yes, as, as Barbara Caldwell just would say, he's a big deal around here. So. Uh, we don't have any presentations tonight, so we'll be jumping straight into the mayor's report. I have a couple things to go over that I think um, I didn't have in my mayor's report. The first one is something I have to share with you with very mixed emotions. Our city engineer has decided to take a job in a very lucky town that is unfortunately not Bastrop. And Wesley Brandon's last day will be March 23rd. I had the opportunity to work with Brandon as a citizen, as a planning and zoning commissioner. I worked with him on the comprehensive plan and I've had an opportunity to work closer with him since I've been elected mayor. Wesley is a man of integrity, a great family man, and an outstanding engineer. And we'll miss him. So their game is our loss, but um, he's helping us with our transition plan, and um, I know he's got some tough times because the, the, his wife and the girls are staying behind till they get done with school. So say an extra little prayer for Mr. Brandon. I think there's going to be some stress in his life in, in these next few weeks, but we sure have enjoyed having him with us. Um, the other thing that I didn't have details on is 
on Friday, March 23rd, and Saturday, March 24th, which is prior to our next council meeting, there is the book and plant fundraiser at the library, and it is 10 to 6 on Friday, March 23rd, and 10 to 4 on Saturday, March 24th. There's some flyers on that on Facebook. I'm sure it's posted at the library, but I just want to make sure everybody aware, uh, is aware of that because that's a once a year thing and you miss out if you, if you miss it for this year. Between February 25th and March, 8, March 5th, I got to start all over. Between February 28th and March 5th, it was a blur. The, those entire days were, were a blur. Um, I wish the Texas Exus picture had turned out a little bit better. That is former Mayor Orr, former Mayor Scott, former Mayor Kesslis, and myself. And what do we all have in common? Texas Exus, which makes Council Member Ennis, very, very happy. So that was kind of a neat picture to get together. We had the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast, which was a great event. In the upper left-hand corner, um, it was I was out at the 4-H auction. That's an annual event and fundraiser, and that was a really neat event. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the Community Garden open house. If you haven't been out to Community Garden, you really need to. There's a lot of local vendors out there. It's a really cool thing. What that is a picture of is on the far right in the blue there are fish and the fish do what fish do it is bubbled to the top goes through the system and fertilizes the plants the plants then filter the water it creates clean water that goes back to the fish it is a very cool thing and um, the young man that is working on that will be happy to explain all the science to you he can make it where the kids can understand it it was just a really really neat thing uh, we did Amplify Bastrop with um, Brandon, trying to think of the, thank you, Blake Torrey and his band, and they were outstanding. That was going on at the same time as the moon, Moonshine and Music we did for the MD Anderson folks. So we saw the Peterson Brothers, Blake Torrey and his band, uh, a, a band that was from out of town that was at the 602 and what's not pictured there was Farm Street Opry and Linda and I covered all three events at different times through that night so we were, we were a little bit tired by the end of that night but it just goes to show you how many fun things there are going on in in Bastrop at, at any time and that was a random Thursday night um, my it's time Texas statistics First of all, Smithville won the extra small town. So a round of applause for our sisters. We were in third place, which is not first, but not bad, until the last 12 hours, and we ended up in fourth place. But I still think that's pretty good for the first time that we were ever really committed to it. We earned 449,000 points. We had 289 users, and those 289 people lost 139 pounds in a six, eight week period. So I thought that was pretty impressive. But I have to give a little bit of a plug. Because of our population, we were considered a small city. The top two were Lancaster and Prosper. They got over two million points. They got more points than anybody else, including metropolitan areas like Austin and Dallas. So with that being first and second, I really was, I was like, if, if we're in third, we, man, we've won this deal because they were off the charts. But um, we did really good. I know that it got a little bit lost in the small business revolution, but what was not lost was our healthy, happy, our happy, healthy New Year's bash and everybody working on it and working on the point. So I'm just super pleased at our participation and look forward to doing it again next year. If we go to the next slide, um, after I turned in the report, we did go to the monthly chamber luncheon and learned a whole lot about the different committees at the chamber, and that was great. Last Wednesday, we hosted the Region 10 quarterly meeting. It had not been hosted in Bastrop for over four years, and we um, are the folks at Lost Pines Art Guild let us host the meeting at, in their building for free and it was fun to show off Bastrop because they had seen the convention center four years ago so we did it in the art building. Had over 90 people there, just a great attendance and um, those are folks that are involved in their 
uh, cities and can bring other bring their spouses back and bring their families back. So it was really neat to do that. Uh, the 8th through the 10th, both Councilmember Ennis and Councilmember Nelson joined me and we went to San Antonio for the TML elected officials training, uh, which caused me to miss the BEDC coffee chat, but I'm sure it was wonderful and I'm, uh, Sean may give us a little update about that later. On March 12th, Reverend Woods was appointed by Bastrop County Commissioner's Court to the Texas Housing Foundation Board. He will be Bastrop's representative, so we're really pleased that that's moving forward. And here we are at City Council tonight. It seemed like I had some. And right before this evening, um, I, I saw Councilmember Peterson, I saw Councilmember Nelson, I saw Councilmember Ennis, and myself. We were all at the MLK catfish fundraiser at um, Maxine's. So if there's a heavy fish, as Councilmember Peterson said, at least we all, almost all smell like fish, so we don't think we'll be bothering each other. Um, I won't go through each of these events, and I will note that the RC Playhouse ribbon cutting, my understanding is that has been rescheduled. So if, if having this on my report makes you show up, please know that that has been rescheduled to a later date. Uh, joint council meeting between us and the BEDC board is coming up on March 22nd. I know there's several folks in the community that are interested in that. And then um, on the 23rd, we have, uh, I'll be going to the best breakfast that morning. That afternoon, I'll be at the Federal Correctional Institute. They are having a buddy walk to recognize the fact that unfortunately in our country have the number of veterans that commit suicide and they are going to do a walk from 4 p.m. Friday to 2 p.m. on Saturday and no one walks alone and they're going to do a lot of things for veterans so um, I'll be participating in that and then we have a nearly all day workshop on water and wastewater that the public is more than welcome to attend be a lot of really good information and the Bastrop Youth Performing Arts Academy is having a fundraiser at the Opera House that evening I believe it's a chicken Alfredo dinner so please support them and then it will be suddenly it will be time for council again Councilmember Peterson do you have anything to share just one question uh, the chicken Alfredo where the chickens gonna come from Oh, Councilmember Peterson. Uh, Councilmember Nelson? Just one thing. Being the liaison to the city's uh, parks board, uh, we attended, or uh, we had a meeting on March the 1st, had an outstanding report from our uh, Parks and Recreation uh, Department, as well as from the State Park and from the uh, Youth Parks Activity Committee. There was a presentation made by Burnett, Burdett and Associates relative to uh, preparing for the uh, public input portion of the uh, uh, initiative to have the Wilt Sports Complex at Fisherman's Park. Uh, this committee considers, uh, or this board considers many different factors in their identifying focus groups, as well as what key audience, audiences, the uh, where's and when's of the uh, public input process. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty stoked by the, uh, the fact that this committee stays very well engaged uh, in all aspects of our parks and trees. Uh, they're also looking at funding options to, to be able to, to fund our parks and, and to increase uh, the activity levels at the park and, and the amenities at the park. And they're looking at fee schedules, uh, building something that brings in revenue, special events, uh, lease concessions, as well as partnerships with the private sector. So they are staying engaged and involved, and I just wanted to give them some kudos for doing so. And that's all I have to report, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Nelson. I, it's always great to hear about our many, many boards and what a good job they're doing. And I feel like uh, several of those things were a result of our joint meeting. So it's really nice to know that meeting together, it, it gives, our, gives folks some direction. Councilmember Ennis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I am uh, the liaison, Council liaison to Main Street and its, uh, and its committees. Uh, I attended the um, uh, meeting Monday of the Main Street Design Committee. They're hard at work on, on uh, wayfinding signs for our parking downtown and uh, approving the designs, the placements, and uh, it's a full on go and it's going to be exciting to have those new signs up so folks that are new to town can find where to park. That's it. Thank you very much, Councilmember Ennis. Councilmember Jones? 
I missed my planning and zoning meeting, but I did make my son's track meet. And so I appreciate you, Debbie Moore, because you do a great job on that, you know, keeping that going. Thank you. City Manager? Yes, ma'am. Um, the mayor mentioned that last Wednesday night, um, the city hosted the Region 10 TML meeting at the Lost Pines um, Art Center. And I want to say a special thank you to Ann Franklin, our city secretary, who did an absolutely amazing job at uh, ensuring that um, we had a, a great party and it was wonderful for um, everyone to, to come to Bastrop and get to, to see our Lost Pines Art Center and they were extremely impressed. And then um, our very own uh, Alan Bajorquez was our um, guest speaker and did a very dynamic um, presentation on transparency from ethics to social media and everything in between. So um, really appreciate uh, everyone who put uh, time and energy into, um, as, as I like to say, putting uh, the city of Bastrop out front and center so that they can appreciate and love it like we do. Absolutely. Thank you for thank you again, Ms. Franklin, for for all you did. All right, we are on to page two. We do not have a work session briefing tonight, so we are at staff and board reports. Mr. Kirkpatrick's coming forward. Presentation and update from the Bastrop Economic <coughs> Development Corporation 921 Main Street Project 2018 debt issu issuance. 2018 launch of small business workshop, EDC's education and workforce development program, entertainment experience evolution conference, MDM, Plastic West conference, and South by Southwest interactive trade show, best economic development group. Yeah, and coffee chat didn't make it. <laughs> coffee chat didn't make it. But we did have a good turnout and always good conversation at coffee chat. So this is uh, the monthly update from the EDC. So mayor, uh, council, city manager, community, thank you all for having us. And uh, first, we want to start with an update from the last uh, Bastrop Economic Development Corporation board meeting on 921 Main Street and, and provide an update to you as well as to the community. The board elected to extend the letter of intent, the non-binding letter of intent with Stone Cobalt for 60 more days upon its expiration on March 1st. Uh, Stone Cobalt is going to be coming to the April meeting to update the board on their activities and where they're at on, on the project and uh, what, the, uh, what the goals are moving forward. Uh, we also discussed the, the current site conditions there at 921 Main Street. And since the board meeting, KSA Engineering has brought out two of their engineers, uh, a civil and a structural engineer, to, to review the site conditions and compare it to uh, where it was a, a year ago uh, as far as the, the remediation that would be, be need to be done. Uh, should a building not be built there or in the interim basis between now and, and the start of construction. And it's just a, a reminder for, for y'all in the community, uh, that work was estimated at somewhere between ninety dollars and $100,000. Not all of it would be required in an interim plan between now and a building being started, and that's what they're looking at is how did the conditions change in the last 12 months as well as you know, if there's going to be a six, 12 month gap between now and start of construction, uh, is there something that, that should be done? It was generally agreed at the field meeting that the conditions had changed post Harvey with the heavy rainfalls and heavy winds, uh, especially if you go and look at the relics building, that side of the building that has a painted facade, uh, the heavy rainfalls uh, and that grit that's created from, from the, the brick that's there as well as the, the paint that's there, uh, definitely th there's more exposure there than there was a year ago. And so they're looking at options and we'll come back to the EDC board uh, next week at the meeting on the 19th with what those look like. We also heard from Jason Hughes uh, from Hilltop Securities and Kristen Servant uh, with Norton Rose Fulbright. Uh, Jason is uh, the financial advisor for the EDC. Uh, Kristen Servant is bond counsel uh, for the EDC. And as part of the FY uh, 2018 budget, the EDC undertook some infrastructure projects or anticipated undertaking some infrastructure projects. Uh, and knowing that the Agnes extension as part of the Seton project was coming, 
going to be occurring in this budget year, uh, had intended to issue $1.2 million in debt to fund that project based on the opinion of probable cost estimate. As you probably have paid attention to the stock market and, and hear the chatter out there with the Federal Reserve and what's going on with the Fed funds rate, uh, Jason indicated, and we can tend to concur, that there's probably at least three more uh, interest rate increases with uh, the Fed funds rate. And the Fed funds rate is the basis for interest rates uh, in the United States, and that's the, the lending rate between bank to bank. Uh, and so uh, looking at that, the, the, the amount of capacity that the EDC has uh, is greater than $1.2 million in a debt issue. And so Jason just came forward and gave the board the options for, for what those were, and he reviewed the existing debt of the EDC. So in 2006, the EDC issued a $2 million issuance with currently about 165,000 uh, remaining in principle with that maturing in 2020. Uh, looking at the certificates of obligation that were issued in conjunction with the city of Bastrop, uh, we had a 2010 CO with a remaining principal of 267,000, the 2013 COs with 2.4 million remaining, and then a 2017 uh, GO refunding balance of 500,000, with the final maturity of those three coming in 2033. All of that debt that is issued in the city is supported by EDC revenues, and so we pay that to the city uh, uh, as y'all issued the debt, and we're, we're the debtor to y'all, I guess is the best way to explain it in simplest. So, the board needs to make a decision in does it want to issue 1.2 million today as it intended or does it want to look at some other options that are out there uh, it, it has about three million dollars uh, in total infrastructure projects between the agnes extension as well as the the project mlk technology project in the industrial park uh, we have some 2013 bond money left and, and it just happens to be a coincidence as this works out that we feel that we have about 200,000 uh, capacity within the budget and that works out to be about $2.6 million in a debt issuance uh, combined with that 13 uh, uh, issuance money that's available gets us to that $3 million mark. And so what that looks like, uh, we looked at it from a 10, 15, 20 year standpoint uh, on a $1.2 million issuance or a $3 million issuance, the total of both of those projects, uh, as well as what would 200,000 in debt service look like uh, and you, you look at that at 10 year at 1.6, uh, 15 year 2.2, 20 year looking at about 2.6. Looking at our current debt stack, which ew, we're not there yet. Uh, and so the next decision the board has to make on the 19th is which one of those three options that they want to go with, uh, basically looking at the dollar amount and the term that they're interested in. And then Jason and his team will put together a bid sheet. This is a private placement. And so the placement agent will then put that bid sheet out Bids will come in, they'll be ranked uh, lowest to, uh, to highest, and, and the lowest bidder wins in this scenario, and that comes back to the board to either accept it, reject it, uh, and, and if they accept the bid, uh, then the, the documents get filed, and about 30 or 45 days later, uh, the cash hits the bank. Uh, these are to fund uh, the, the Agnes project at 304. Uh, again, as y'all heard me say before, this is project 26, number nine out of 34 on the transportation plan. Uh, and then the, the potential to fund the MLK technology project with debt to conserve cash using the lower interest rate today versus a future debt issuance uh, where we would pay a higher interest rate three or four years from now. The advantage to a 20-year debt issuance when we move and look at our debt schedule uh, and you look out at where we have debt due, uh, 2033, 2022, uh, 2028, and then 2020, Sitting here in 2018, a 20-year debt issuance puts us out to about 2038, which gives us that four to five-year span between debt coming due. And so the 20-year option is a good one, the 10 and 15 are as well, uh, but stacking your debt so that every three or four years, five years, you have an issuance expiring so that you're able to go replace that with another project. Uh, if you do that correctly over the course of 20 years, you're doing four or five major projects throughout that, the process of that. And when you look at from start to finish, it takes 36, 48 months from the time we start a project, start thinking about it to the time we complete it. And so the timing on that works really well to get your debt stack lined up, uh, even for a small organization like us. But also one of the things that in our budget, and we refer to it as unrecognized revenue because it's revenue that comes in and we, we immediately uh, rebate it back out to the sales tax rebates 
We have the Burleson Crossing Agreement out there and the Bucky's Agreement as well. And you see our projections on this. Uh, the Bucky's Agreement will pay off in, in FY 2020. Uh, with Burleson Crossing going out to FY 2022. And so the concern that we, we eat up our cash flow uh, is we have a debt issuance that's going to be expiring in 2020. We also have uh, the Bucky's agreement that's going to be expiring. We have uh, the Burleson Crossing agreement a couple years later that looks like it's going to expire, which that'll be new cash flow into our system if you, if you think about it as unrecognized revenue and new sales tax collected that we've never been able to use for anything else uh, uh, coming back on our books as cash flow. Um, 2018 launch is next Tuesday. Uh, I have not gotten updated numbers uh, since the end of last week, but uh, we had 54, 55 people registered for this. Uh, it's, it's going to be really exciting. I know the mayor uh, and city manager are going to come over uh, and, and visit briefly. We're really excited about the, the 1 o'clock to 145 session, which is na navigating city regulations. Uh, Trey Job and Dave Gaddis and Wesley Brandon, uh, moderated by Sarah O'Brien, really talking about you know what the process is if you're starting a business in Bastrop and you come into the planning department or you come into to the city uh, to be able to answer a lot of those frequently asked questions and we're really excited about that. Uh, our noon speaker, our keynote is Alicia Cook. Uh, she does a, a program called Eight Secrets from a Sh Secret Shopper. And as y'all know, Alicia last year was our secret shopper uh, with Signet Strategies, one of the, the two that came in and did that project. Uh, that's going to be really exciting. Uh, so registration is still open, I believe. Uh, but uh, if you're going to register, you probably need to do that quick because that we will shut it down on Thursday because we got to uh, and order lunch. Bastrop Youth Career Day is coming up on April 20th uh, from 9 to noon at uh, the Performing Arts Center. Uh, there's a little bit of change to this program from previous years. Uh, previous years we focused on juniors and seniors. Uh, this year we're, we've backed that up and it's going to be sophomores and juniors trying to catch that decision point of what they're going to do post-graduation earlier trying to connect uh, our, our local employers with them. Uh, that's always one of the favorite parts of that is, is we get so many local employers that come and set up their equipment and their machinery and their displays to talk about uh, what employment opportunities are here in Bastrop and when you graduate, uh, what that looks like for you. Uh, what we know about statistically of our high school graduates, and this is for both high schools, is about 55% of our high school graduates are entering the workforce upon graduation, and about 45% are going off uh, into some kind of career, technical education, community college, or higher ed. And so this program is helping to to emphasize the importance of soft skills, it's emphasizing the importance of career readiness and skills training that, that's available in high school to get them ready to go enter that workforce upon graduation. I know y'all have heard from the mayor and city manager on the Entertainment Experience Evolution Conference. Uh, this was a great learning experience for all of us. Uh, it's really going to be vital in a lot of what we brought back to, to utilize it within our community. Uh, learning about dwell times and how long shoppers are in our community, what attractors are, and that there's different types of attractors. Uh, uh, from fountains at the end of a, a mall on a pier in New Jersey, uh, to a stage show in Puerto Rico, to a movie theater anchoring an entertainment complex and, and everything and anything in between. It's just a matter of it being an attractor and getting folks to come to, to that shopping district and, and not just spend three or four hours because what we learned is at three or four hours they need something to eat, they need to go to the bathroom, they need to sit down and if you don't offer that for them they're going to get in their car, they're going to drive off and not come back. And so if you can provide those things for them at that three four hour mark, you can catch, catch them for another three or four hours. And so Great conference, learned a lot, made some good connections on that. MD&M uh, Plastech West is a, a medical device show primarily. Uh, we recruited this show, we've been doing it for several years now. Uh, it's the largest uh, uh, medical manufacturing show uh, in the world, I believe, I know in the United States. Um, but this is a sector, our bio and life science sector in Bastrop. We have a cluster here in R&D and research and development. And so supporting that with some more manufacturing initiatives. It's also held in conjunction with one of our partners in Dallas, uh, does a site consultant broker event uh, the first night of the show. Uh, and so uh, Gene went out for this and participated in, in the, uh, uh, the reception on the first night, but then also worked the floor uh, visiting with companies that, that are possibly expanding. Uh, California is, is very good recruiting territory for us. 
Uh, I, I've learned a lot about their tax structure out there. Currently, personal income tax rate is 13%. Uh, and so every dollar you earn out there, 13% of that is going to the, to the state of California. Housing affordability, especially in, in the metros, LA, San Francisco, San Diego, uh, entry price point house for a three bedroom, two bath, uh, you can add a couple commas to that. Uh, you're not buying one for 200, 250,000. And I can tell you my experience when you're meeting with uh, senior level folks that are not C-suite executives out there in your first introduction to them and you start talking about housing and the fact they can buy a house for $350,000 in Texas uh, and have a yard, that moves them. Uh, and getting those guys motivated to go, hey, we might wanna move to Texas uh, is, is a good selling point for us and the fact that there's no personal income tax here in, in the state of Texas is, is another one. Uh, the Plano example, someday I'll teach a class on, on Toyota moving to Plano. Uh, they've done a lot of, of public speaking on that since that announcement. Uh, so we are currently at South by Southwest Interactive. Uh, this is a cooperative uh, trade show uh, booth that we've done for the last couple of years with the EDC. Uh, the city of Bastrop is involved, Sarah in the hospitality and downtown department. Uh, but we partner with Bastrop here, Elgin, Smithville, and Bastrop County. It's kind of a dual purpose booth. It's, it's an interesting trade show in the fact that on Sunday, it's kind of a mix of international and national, national visitors coming into Austin for South by Southwest, and then the locals that are off that day. Uh, Monday is really the uh, the visitors coming into Austin, both from inside the U.S. and, and inter internationally. Uh, and then you, you roll into Tuesday and it's all locals. Uh, and then tomorrow will be all locals again uh, because it's, it's about a four or five hour walk through there. And once you've seen it, unless you have some reason to come back, uh, you leave. And so uh, it's a great trade show for us. We've developed some, uh, some good leads from the, from the EDC perspective. And then on the, the tourism and, and visit Bastrop side of it to folks coming out here, uh, we really promote uh, locally that it's a great place to come, but for those guys coming into South by Southwest, catch us on your way in because a lot of those international visitors come in to the Houston airport or catch us on your way out and spend an extra day here. Uh, we also, within the tech sector, a lot of those guys are self-funding their trips. Uh, and so Bastrop is a more affordable location to enjoy uh, South by Southwest. And I believe that is my report. Um, Sean, why don't you talk about the article that came out today about oh. our participation in South by Southwest? So um, Sunday, uh, KUT Radio uh, stopped by the booth and, and wanted to talk about uh, uh, the suburbs in Austin and where the growth is going. And Sarah O'Brien did an interview with KUT. Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping that it, that got sent to y'all. I know it got sent to the EDC board. Uh, it's a great article. Uh, there was uh, it was on the radio this morning, plus also the write up on it. Uh, really talking about uh, the south, uh, east, and, and and south metros of where people are going. San Marcos is right down the aisle from us. Uh, and how you know the affordability out there and the location of, of our community to, to downtown Austin makes a lot of sense. As you've heard me speak before, uh, you know by 2024 you're going to have a limited access freeway from Bastrop into downtown Austin. Uh, all of those uh, lights will be overpasses, and then hopefully the Bertram Expressway goes a little bit better than Mopac did for uh, CTMRA, and, and that'll be finished as well. Uh, and so. Uh, I tell people today when we're recruiting from my office, you're 22 minutes to the Austin airport, and we go to the, the Opportunity Austin, Austin Chamber office at the Hilton Hotel, nine to four, I can get there in 35 minutes. That's only going to get faster in 2024. Uh, I suspect we'll be able to get to the Austin Hilton probably in the 26, 27, 28 minute range. Uh, I'm not real sure how the interchange at 183 of the Bertram Expressway is gonna quite work, but if you're willing to pay the tolls, it'll probably even be faster than that. Uh, and you also think about getting down into Southwest Parkway in Capital of Texas, that'll all be a limited access freeway to access Mopac down there. Uh, and so you can live in Bastrop, Texas, and, and one of the spouses can work in Austin, the other one we hope works here because uh, we do want to create jobs in Bastrop, but it also provides interconnectivity for us on the logistics distribution uh, side. Great article. I highly recommend going and watching it. I have not actually listened to the radio interview yet, but I did read the article, and so it was uh, very glad that Sarah was there and did a good job representing the folks that have listened to it who said she did a great job. Council, any questions for Mr. Kirkpatrick? <laughs> Thank I, you very much, Sean. I think good I job. took more than three minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilmember Ennis? This is going to show my ignorance, but 
is there a cap on on the amount of running bond issues you have? I mean, there is not, and so it's really a debt capacity issue and a cash flow issue, and and what the the board is comfortable uh, bonding out, and so how much cash flow is available. So as the Bucky's and Burleson crossings agreements go away, there's more capacity now in the budget to do other things. Uh, there's there's also uh, some of the other data as it expires creates capacity within there. So, you know, we've got fixed obligations every year. The debt has got to get paid first. Uh, and so uh, whatever that dollar amount is, we have to always be comfortable that we're going to bring in that amount of revenue. Uh, the Burleson Crossing Bucky's agreements, that's going to get reimbursed no matter what. Uh, those agreements are in place. Uh, and so there is not a cap on it, but it, it's really based on your cash flow and your ability to issue debt and, and repay it. Okay. Thank you. Another factor that he, he didn't mention is um, you'll begin to see if the market's concerned about your repayment based on the yep. interest rate and the price of the insurance. So typically the rating agencies that um, will do this, Jason Hughes and the bond attorney factor that in, mm -hmm. and it, they would be irresponsible to let their clients get too far out. So if that becomes an issue, um, you would know it because they'd be having a fairly bold conversation with you before you got there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and if you'll go and look at our budget, we break down how much of our revenues are going into operating expenses and then how much of it's going to what we refer to as debt, projects, uh, and uh, economic development reimbursements. And the bulk of our budget of $2.2 .2 million is going into the latter of that. And, and we want to be responsible for our operating costs uh, so that we have the most money available to go do projects. And for example, $250,000 this year, and it's allocated for next year for the downtown trail expansion. In two years, that'll be capacity within the budget uh, to be able to use the, that money for something else. Thank you, Councilmember Ennis. Thank you. And Jason's, if, if Jason made a presentation to BDC at our last meeting, and that was videotaped, and he really walked through the details of it because you want to stay in a healthy position, and so um, that. You can call Jason if, if you want. You can visit with Mr. Kirkpatrick about it. But the real experts did a, just a fantastic job when they presented. So you might want to take a look at that video. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kirkpatrick. OK, it is 7.07. .07. We're at citizen comments. Madam Secretary, do we have any citizen comments? I'm hoping we have at least one. I'm expecting one. And we have one, Debbie Moore. Mayor, Council, and City Manager. The last time I talked to you, we had just wrapped on a Canada Dry commercial down at Fisherman's Park. And I'm glad to be able to tell you that they have made a $500 donation to the food pantry. That same locations manager brought another commercial here last week for AARP, an organization that's dear to my heart. and. Um, they shot out at the Lost Pine, the, at the Boy Scout camp, and then they wanted to shoot at the um, fire department and on the bridge. They wanted to bring a, an electric car on the bridge, but we told them for safety reasons they couldn't. Um, they fully understand that, so they, they pulled a rickshaw. Uh, but they worked with us on that. Chief Wabas was out of town, but we texted him and emailed him. And he said, we'll work something out. And if we hadn't been able to, to arrange to have some firefighters open the, the, um, the doors so they could get a shot with firefighters, with the fire trucks in the back, Chief Adcock was willing to help wherever he could. We worked everything out. And at the end of the shoot, the, the um, producer, who's from Los Angeles, walked up to me, stuck her hand out, and said, thank you so very much for introducing me to your lovely town. She said, I've never been here before, but you you all and the city manager, because a lot of times they don't send their, their final applications in until the last minute, because they don't know where they're going to be shooting. She got it turned around, got it reviewed, made sure everything was OK. And the spirit of working together, which has been a pleasure to do over these last several years, she said, I said, you know, we're, we're film friendly. You can't turn something around in a day in Austin. You don't need to be shooting up there. You need to be shooting down here. And she looked at the locations manager and said, bring me back to Bastrop. 
So it pays off because the fire department's going to be getting a donation from this this production, and so are the two firefighters who put on their garb and and were in the background. So the other commercial, there I think Relics got an honorarium and and. And in, in between, I failed to say, H-E-B came back to town. And they shot downtown, uh, went into a hiccup on some parking. We were able to work that out. And they were just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I told them again, you can't do that in Austin. We can turn it around for you, so come back. So I haven't gotten their donation yet, but I know it will be it will be a good one because I know the, the locations manager, and he's a quality guy. So we're getting out even more because Austin's getting harder to deal with because of the size, because of our congestion, because of the, the red tape. So um, Bastrop being film, fr film friendly is even getting spread further and wider. So it's a pleasure to do things like that. And I thank everybody and the chief and the chief for, for helping and uh, Trey whenever necessary. So it's been a team effort and it's paying off. So thank you. And to really underscore what Ms. Moore is talking about, we have a $50 film permit fee. Mm -hmm. And so she's mentioned that they've made $500 donations. So we, rather than paying a fee, let them choose to do that. And our nonprofits benefit by this great service because they leave so happy they write a much bigger check than That's they right. would if we required the permit fee. Exactly. That's why we did it from the get-go, and it's worked well. Thank you, Ms. Moore. You're one of the reasons that we are considered film friendly, and I know you put a lot of time into that, and that's appreciated. And also, of course, Mr. Job's ability to cue the fog on the water yes. on schedule, I, I think that contributes. And, and, and the other thing is that they didn't want too much sunlight um, for the for the recent commercial, so it was a little cloud cover. So Trey, you know, he's still, he's still Good. still hanging in there. His record is still intact. So. We appreciate that very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other citizen comments? Anybody else want to do anything? Okay, we're on the consent agenda, the only consent, and, and I'll go ahead and read it since it's just one. It Consider action to approve city council minutes from the February 27th, 2018 meeting. Motion for consent agenda? So moved. Got a motion from council member second. Nelson? I have a second from council member Peterson. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Councilmember Nelson? Yes. Councilmember Peterson? Yes. Councilmember Jones? Yes. Councilmember Ennis? Yes. Thank you, Council. We're moving on to items for individual consideration. I'm on 9A. Consider action to approve resolution number R2018-15 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, awarding a contract to MWM Design Group for design, bidding, and construction phase services for the State Park Trail Project in an amount not to exceed $172,905.75 without prior written approval from the City as attached in Exhibit A, authorizing the City Manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Mr. Brandon. Thank you very much, Mayor and Council. I really appreciate those kind, very undeserved words earlier. Um, just want to quickly say how much I'm going to miss everybody. I was just uh, been very lucky to work in a place like Bastrop, and it's just been a, an incredible experience for me over the last uh, almost five years. Um, I want to keep it short. I told Steve I wouldn't cry in front of him, so uh, <laughs> save it for later. But uh, um, so this item is a resolution for the State Park Trail project. We received a grant for this project in 2014, and it covers up to 80 percent of the construction cost for the project. And the items that we're responsible for include the design cost and the environmental compliance um, cost as well as the um, the bidding phase um, cost and so this this contract is a result of a, of a public notification and request for qualifications process uh, we received 14 uh, responses from that uh, from that process and after scoring all of the responses and um, um, trying to find the most highly qualified consultant, we found that MWM Design Group had the most experience and the uh, most qualifications to uh, perform this work. And so the the contract itself is kind of 
set up to define 13 different tasks. Um, and the way we've um, set up this agenda item is the first 12 tasks would be funded in this year's budget and would leave the, um, the items that would be left for the construction phase in, in a future budget year. Um, the, the anticipated construction schedule for this project is to um, have it all designed and ready to build by the end of the budget year and hopefully get funding to um, put towards the construction of the project next year. And so we, we've kind of broken it up in, in that fashion. Um, and that's pretty much the uh, Council, the do you have any comment. questions for Mr. Brandon? Do we, do we have any idea? What we, until we do this, we don't know how much construction is going to be, right? Uh, no, sir. We have done some, some high-level cost estimating, um, and that's, um, that amount's come out to a little less than $900,000. The grant that we applied for included a cost of up to $1.3 million in construction costs, which would leave that match um, for the city at $260,000. And so anything less than that, we're only paying 20% of that total cost. And that was included in your project scope so that they, they, they're not going to design something that costs $10 million. That's right. And, and uh, one aspect of this contract and the reason that the construction phase services are quite a bit higher than what they would normally be is we're using what's called a field engineering approach to this project. And the, the beauty of these, it, it, they work really well for sidewalk projects because it's very common to have to um, field engineer a lot of the work when you're, um, when you're actually building it. And so using this approach, it allows us to save money on the front end by not going through and doing the rigorous design work initially, which many times is, is not actually what can be built when you're actually into the construction phase because sidewalks just tend to vary a lot by the elevation changes that aren't always captured as well as they could be in the design phase and so this lets us go out and just bid the project and the contractor knows that they're that they're building it on a unit cost basis and we just engineer it in the field as we go along I should say we don't engineer the whole thing in the field. We look at the areas that require more detailed design and design those, but then the, the um, other areas, we work that out in the field. Councilmember Ennis, did you have another question? No, I was just trying to figure up all the figures in my mind while you're talking. No, I'm, I'm fine. And we so I want to I want to say that in another way, because one of the questions I was going to ask you is I didn't, was the way some of the um, contract was worded regards to survey because it was pretty specific that it wasn't tying down each and every tree but basically what you're saying is instead of paying them to tie down every single tree if, you, if you're trying to do that over a wide period that costs a lot of money but the site you're going to walk out there and go well let's go around this one and let's do that so if you're not going to use that information it, you don't need it to that level of detail you just don't pay them to do that and you engineer it in the field as you're going that's exactly right so yeah. I, I was trying to make sure I knew why we weren't doing that and you helped answer that question so thank you very much um, Councilmember Ennis did you have a follow-up question and we have, um, I have Tony Bonodono here. He would be the design engineer on the project, and he can answer any other questions you have. So the $94,340.75, and I'm, just because I'm reading off of your backup slide, was already funded in the budget that this council approved last year. Yes, ma'am. It actually included um, $160,000 this year. And so we would only be using um, the $95,000 uh, there's also some costs that we have to pay TechStop because it's inside their right of way and there's work that they do to help us manage the project with it being a federal grant. It's, it's a little complicated, but TechStop receives the funding and then they reimburse the city as we in, incur okay. those costs. And so the, one of the main reasons that you've divided it is that you don't want to 
you know you can't spend all of this money if you're not going to get the grant to match the funds. So you're that's trying correct. to take the logical first step and spend money that's already budgeted, but stop it before you're spending money that's not appropriate to spend until you're in construction. That's Am exactly I right. understanding that correctly? Yes, okay. Anyone else on the dais? I'm sorry, Councilmember Ennis, any other questions? Your mic's on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I have a um, citizen that has asked to speak on this item, Herb Goldsmith. Council, Mayor, Manager, appreciate the time to talk to you. I know you think I'm OCD after all the emails you've received. But I do have um, some concerns about this project in general. On uh, February 13th, Mr. Brandon pointed out when he presented the capital improvement program measures that you have to watch out for grants. Just because it's a grant doesn't mean it's something we should, it should be a priority. I am referring to the capital improvement program appendix B on the comprehensive plan which basically had prioritization of a number of projects. This particular project wasn't the highest. It rated high, but when I look at it, I personally would rather have downtown Bastrop traffic calming right now, but that's the way it is. This is what was enacted in 2016, I believe. And so my concern is, is this the best use for our money? I don't believe it is. I believe it's a great project, but I don't even think it makes the priority. The second thing is, if we're going to have a capital improvement program, as pointed out in Appendix B, <clears throat> we should follow it. If we're not going to follow it, or for some reason we can't follow it, then we should make it a priority to amend it and make it a more viable product. But as it stands now, we're kind of using pieces of it. So those are my, that's my comments. You have all everything. I've sent it to you, the emails, et cetera. And I'm certainly happy that we have the drainage report, because now all that can be considered as part of the uh, CIP projects. And um, I'm looking forward to see how we handle that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldsmith. Um, I, I want to just acknowledge uh, Mr. Goldsmith's concerns about Appendix B and the fact that we're not following it. I visited with Wesley this afternoon, and Appendix B is um, a template that is intended to be a guide for us as we develop the capital improvement uh, program. Um, as y'all are well aware, um, I have, for lack of a better term, dealed, uh, called this year the year of education. Um, Mr. Goldsmith raises all of the appropriate um, questions and points relative to a capital improvement program and how it should be managed. Um, the challenge that we have today is what do you put on it? Um, so I would encourage um, everyone at home to stay tuned in. In February, we started the drainage journey. Um, at the end of March, we're going to have a five-hour workshop on water wastewater. In April, um, we're doing a mid-year budget um, uh, workshop, and we're going to talk about the pavement condition index and begin the conversation on our street maintenance. Every one of those meetings, y'all will be asked to make policy decisions that will in turn create yet another set of policy decisions that have to be checked before we can finally, um, I think sometime in the fall or early winter, um, have some more clear uh, defined projects and how they uh, fit together systematically so that um, you can do exactly what Mr. Goldsmith is asking, and that is is that we address water, wastewater, um, streets, drainage, and whatever else um, falls into a category in a more holistic, systematic way. 
So I want to acknowledge the concern that we're not following the comp plan and say we're putting a lot of energy into doing that very thing, but what we want to do is to solve problems, not treat symptoms. And so um, given my lack of knowledge of our history, um, this past year really has been um, asking staff to uh, bring me up to speed and then um, we're bringing a lot of information to y'all so that you can make uh, more holistic decisions. So um, Mr. Goldsmith and I have exchanged what I'm affectionately calling epistles because I've, I've written a fairly detailed long uh, email to him to, to help him appreciate that I more than anybody appreciate his thoughtfulness and what he terms his OCD because we, we need citizens like Mr. Goldsmith engaged in this process because that's what makes the system go around. But just know that the journey that we need to take is months in the making and will um, take us into fiscal year 2019 before uh, y'all will be in a position to um, make the right policy choices and if those aren't in compliance with um, the comprehensive plan um, all of you have made that abundantly clear to me that we will at that point amend the comprehensive plan and put whatever is appropriate at that time um, as a part of that plan so we can continue to follow that. The other comment that I would like to make, um, Mr. Goldsmith, you're exactly right. That comprehensive plan was approved in 2016. It was November 22nd of 2016. And um, so it was right there at the end of the year. And then um, we had an interim city manager. I, I just realized, and I failed to mention, today is your one-year anniversary. And it's amazing the what the Gass. difference a year makes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Thank so you. there's days it feels like yesterday and days it feels like you've been here your entire life. I, I, I realize that. But um, so it wasn't used for the budget last year. And um, I think one of the things that we need to look at is the Appendix B calendar along with the work plan calendar so that those things are tied together because it wasn't approved until November of 2016 but it was started back in 20 end of 2015 middle of 2015 so that project list at this point is is really several several years old all of that being said Mr. Goldsmith is a thousand percent right. It's intended to be a living document, but we're intended to follow it. And so if we need to make revisions to it, we need to do that in a timely manner. And I, I want to echo the city manager's appreciation that not, not everyone's willing to spend the time that Mr. Goldsmith is, and I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Given that, where, where we stand tonight, um, it sounds like Mr. Goldsmith is making a comment that he's not not so sure this is exactly the way that we need to go. Unfortunately, we are the people who get to vote on that. And uh, Mr. Brandon has explained that the money that we're talking about was budgeted in the budget that we approved last fall. And not only is it included in that budget, but this number, this amount is actually less than what was um, put in the budget for this. So that being said, I would encourage council, do you have any further questions for Mr. Brandon or any further discussion for the city manager? And if there is no further discussion, I'm happy to entertain a motion or not. Move to approve as presented. I have a motion to approve from council member Jones. Second. I have a second from council member Ennis. Is there any further discussion? I'd Can't like to say Ennis? that we started on this project uh, not only in the budget, but we've been talking about it for some for some time. So I kind of feel like we're in the middle of uh, we're on the train, we're already rolling down the track, and uh, that's why I'm voting to second it. Uh, were it something that was at the beginning of the planning stage and it did not adhere to uh, uh, our our uh, comprehensive plan, I'd, I wouldn't be doing this, but. I think we're already on our way on this one. Thank you, Council Member Council Member Jones. And I can say um, connecting the city to the state park in a safe manner has been a priority for people that have lived here for decades. So I'm personally just thrilled to see this move forward. Any further comments? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Council Member Jones. Yes. 
Council Member Ennis? Yes. Council Member Nelson? Yes. Council Member Peterson? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you, Council. We're now on the last page. We're on item 9B, consider action to approve resolution number R2018-16 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, appointing the City Manager as the Chief Executive Officer and Authorized Representative to act in all matters in connection with the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program and committing the City to provide matching funds to secure and complete the FEMA Mitigation Grant and establishing an effective date. Mr. Brandon. Thank you very much. Um, so this resolution is... Um, in regards to the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. Um, and it's a program that we've commonly used to fund other drainage related projects and hazard mitigation projects. Um, we've uh, recently received funding for new generators at our uh, wastewater lift stations. Um, we've received funding for other various drainage projects throughout the city. And this, this item is, is really just a, it's a requirement as part of the program um, that says that you have to have a resolution of support from the governing body in order to apply for the, uh, the grant funding. And um, in this case, what our, what our goal is, since we don't actually have projects, we don't know which projects we want to apply for yet because the, the um, window to apply for those projects hasn't opened yet. Um, the requirement for this says that you have to get that resolution after the um, disaster declaration has been made. And so this would fall under the grant program that's opened up after Hurricane Harvey. And so in, in order for us to be reimbursed for the costs of even applying for the project, we have to have this resolution in place before we um, procure and solicit um, requests for qualifications for an engineering firm and a grant administration firm to help us prepare the application and um, determine which projects to apply for. And so what we've done in the past is we've brought the resolution to you, but then once we know which projects we'd like to apply for and what the um, what the funding requirements are going to be for those projects will come back to you and and request approval to actually apply for the projects all of those were very polite words to say this is bureaucratic red tape and we need to put this in place if we ever want free money from the feds amen it's a, mayor it is a box it, it, Just is, checking. A, it is a box Just checking. checking measure that's correct okay are there any questions from council for the city engineer there's no questions I'd be happy to take a motion move to approve I have a motion to approve from Councilmember Jones second I have a second from Councilmember Peterson is there any further discussion seeing none Madam Secretary if you'll call the roll Councilmember Jones yes Councilmember Peterson yes Councilmember Ennis yes Councilmember Nelson yes Thank you, Council. The measure passes unanimously. We're on 9C. Consider action to approve a resolution of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, authorizing a contract between the City of Bastrop and Go Collaborative for the development of a cultural arts master plan in the amount not to exceed $80,000, authorizing the City Manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause, and establishing an effective date. Miss O'Brien. Hello. Good evening, everybody. I know we're um, all behind because of the revolution, but I'm happy to report that the Cultural Arts Master Plan is still on schedule, um, so that's one thing that we're not behind on. Um, a huge thanks to the Master Plan Committee um, that was appointed by Bastrop Art and Public Places for their hard work in going through um, the eight really good qualified RFPs that they received. They were able to narrow that down to four finalists, and we were able to conduct interviews with those, and I'm happy to report that the decision was unanimous um, in that the Cultural Arts Master Plan Committee is recommending the city um, partner with Go Collaborative based out of Austin and Miss Lynn Osgood with Go Collaborative is in the room if anyone has any questions for her. Um, as identified in the comp plan and in our fiscal year 18 work plan, the Cultural Arts Master Plan is a very important project that we hope will help unify our arts community and also make sure that we are investing um, those dollars in the most economic um, positive light that we can to make sure that we're getting a good 
return on our investment. Um, Go Collaborative's approach, I think, really spoke to us. Um, they broke it up into three phases, and the first one is to discover, um, and that's kind of the research phase and the public engagement phase. Um, really excited some of the engagement that they have done in other communities is actually art related and so you may see some art projects um, pop up in some of our parks that neighbors can actually go and write what they would like to see incorporated and um, the second phase is the envision um, what do we want to see and how do we get there and then the third phase is develop um, I'm really excited to get this project started and off the ground we hope um, to have a final plan to you guys um, in December um, is the timeline that we're working on um, and so I'm happy to answer any questions and Miss Lynn is here as well to answer any if we have any you know in December we often only have one December meeting that's the plan right now okay so we will try our best to make sure we make the first meeting in December and we'll ask for grace if we do not that's <laughs> all we can hope for any questions from Ms. O'Brien? I, I, real quickly, please, Councilmember Brandis, tell me how many people were on your committee. Absolutely. Um, I had that at the front, and then I shuffled it to the back. We had um, a member from BIAPP, Ed Scarnulis, um, Terry Moore with the Bastrop Opera House, Chico Portillo with the Bastrop Independent School District, Debbie Moore representing the Film Commission, Brenda Bush recommending, er, representing music, um, Dan Hayes Clark with the Bastrop County Historical Society, Mark Rose with the Lost Pines Art Center, Barbara Rolanski with the Parks Board, Karen Sterling representing Arts at Large, Clint Howard with Visit Bastrop, and then myself. So that is one, two, three, four, twelve. Okay, it was totally self-serving because I wanted you to read the list because to my knowledge, that's one of the first time all of those different types of arts were all together working together and I, I haven't since I've been here yes I know for a fact but then like I said it was a unanimous decision and so I was really proud of that fact and I think um, city manager Linda Umbel was able to visit with the group and um, make sure that they all understood the scope of the project and how important it is to the future um, of Bastrop and our tourism economy um, and so uh, several of those members are going have agreed to stay on board as we go throughout the planning process and so we're really looking forward to, to getting this started thank you councilmember Ennis I noticed that this is a, we'll do a budget amendment out of uh, hot funds uh, we won't be taking any money away from uh, folks that have all already been promised money no sir um, we knew that this day was coming but we <laughs> didn't know what the day would cost so there is a pot of money that we put in a fund called Opportunity. And um, that way there was not going to be any limitation in trying to fit what we needed in a budget with no concept of what it was gonna cost. So um, with that, um, Tracy will bring back a budget amendment and that money is sitting in the Opportunity Fund for just this and whatever else comes up. So it's not Robin Peter to pay Paul. Great, thanks. Council, any further questions for Ms. O'Brien? Just, just to clarify, this was part of the comprehensive plan. Yes, sir. And it was all, and also is part of our work plan to develop a uh, consistent and collaborative process for for as many things we possibly can do to to have the shared benefit. Am I correct? Absolutely. Um, it was in Chapter Eight um, identified in Eight Four and Eight Four One um, of the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Councilman Brandis? It's also, also part of our uh, uh, joint meeting with BAIPP as yes, well, it wasn't was. it? Yes, okay. Thank you. Yes, it was. Thank you for bringing that up. The, and that, uh, another thing that um, City Manager Umble has brought to us over the last year is council meeting with the boards and commissions, and I think we're already seeing the fruits of that cooperative effort. So much appreciated. Any further questions, Mr. Peterson, council member? Okay, if, if there's no further discussion, I'm happy to consider a motion. I move to approve. I have a motion to approve from council member Ennis. Second. I have a second from council member Peterson. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, city secretary, if you'll please call the roll. Council member Ennis. Yes. Council member Peterson. Yes. Council member Jones. Yes. Council member Nelson. Yes. Thank you, council. That measure passes unanimously. 
It is 7.39. We're, we will be moving to an executive session. Ten, item 10A, City Council shall convene into closed executive session pursuant to Section 551.072 of the Texas Government Code to deliberate about the economic development project known as Project Revolution by the Bastrop Economic Development Corporation. Item 10B, City Council shall convene into closed executive session pursuant to Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code to discuss and deliberate litigation matters with the City Attorney regarding Pine Forest 6 et al. versus City of Bastrop et al. It is 7.39 and we are now in executive session. It is 9.02. I am calling us back into session. There will be no actions taken with regard to the executive session items, and so I am at item number 12, adjournment. So moved. I have a motion to adjourn from Councilmember Nelson. Second. I have a second from Councilmember Ennis, and we are adjourned.